All right, folks. So welcome to lecture 22 of ECE 3311, Principles of Communication Systems. So today's lecture, uh, what we're going to talk about is MRE quadrature amplitude modulation. All right. So uh, this is going to be some exciting stuff. Um, and uh, we're going to go through it. And what we're going to find is we're going to see some very interesting uh, techniques in order to leverage this very extraordinary modulation scheme. So, um, so what we've seen so far, okay. so we've seen amplitude modulation and we've seen phase modulation. Okay. So, um, so, so what QAM is, is kind of this nice hybrid combination of the two. So amplitude modulation, ASK, uh, information is exclusively communicated in the amplitude, right? Uh, every TS seconds. Uh, on the other hand, uh, PSK modulations is entirely communicated in the phase of, of the said waveform every TS seconds. Um, so QAM is the combination of two where simultaneously you have both amplitude and you have phase information that represents a unique binary pattern every TS seconds. So this actually makes for some really powerful stuff, right? So first of all, general expression. We always have to start with our general expression. Um, so, so as we saw, you get a passband waveform from a complex baseband waveform. You multiply it by a complex exponential that, is, that has a frequency that is equal to the carrier frequency you want the passband signal to be centered at, in this case, FC. Um, and you also have the spectrum and power spectral density expressions uh, for said waveforms, uh, passband signal, based on the complex baseband signal, All right? So let's, let's do a little bit of a recap because it's been a while since uh, we've, we've done lecture 20 and 21, right? So let's, let's go into it. So amplitude modulation, uh, what, the way we saw this, right? Um, was that we have in this case, we we have mm -hmm, amplitude shift keying. Um, uh, essentially, what we got is uh, we we have some sort of representation or sort of message signal. Right. In this case is uh, some sort of binary representation. Okay, or pattern. And this gets uniquely mapped. I hope I spelled uniquely wrong. Mapped to a G of M of T. Okay. And this, okay, the mapping is to the amplitude. Okay. So the this is where the information is contained. Okay. So the, the message info contained here. <laughs> so phase is constant, we hope, right? That's why we have phase lock loops. And frequency is constant, again, we hope. So here what we saw was something that looked like this in class, right? T, and then let's say we had A, 3A, 5a, 7a, and let's say these amplitude values rep represent some sort of binary pattern. So there are four of these, four amplitude values. So how many bits are represented in four amplitude values? Okay. So if there's four, which is equal to m, which is equal to two to the b, therefore b is equal to two. And so we can say, let's say a binary pattern is zero, zero, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, okay? So every TS seconds, 0, TS, 2 TS, 3 TS, 4 TS, 5 TS, right? What do we got? Well, first of all, I just also want to do A minus A minus 3A minus 5A minus 7A. Right? And suppose the first binary pattern we have is zero, zero, 
then one one, then zero one, then one one, then one zero, right? So what do we got? Okay, so zero zero is A. One one, five A. And then zero one, three A. Then zero, one one, five A, and then one zero, seven A. Some might wanna say seven up, but <laughs> uh, no. So then, and remember, Amplitude modulation, right? So we got this thing. And you might say, what the heck is that thing? That's the envelope, right? Because what we do is we modulate. So this here is an envelope. And really what we're communicating at passband is not this. constant frequency, but the amplitude of this sin sinusoid, okay? Sinusoidal waveform is changing, okay? Phase is kept constant, frequency is kept constant, but the amplitude changes every TS seconds, okay? Amplitude phase shift keying. And then phase shift keying, what we saw there, PSK, Amplitude is kept constant. But again, every TS seconds, hey, mirror. Uh, what happens is, let's say up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then let's say this was BP, BPSK. This is a zero representation. And let's say they're 180 degrees different. We would have a phase change of 180 degrees. One, two, three, correct. Yep, one, two, three, Schneike. Yeah, I goofed. See, that's why I hate PSK. <laughs> I can't draw. Okay, one, one cycle, two, two cycle, three, three cycle. Since we're going to one to one, there's no phase change. One, one cycle, two cycle, three cycle. Ah, phase change. One, two, three. Okay, so here we saw the phase change. Here, here, uh, here, none. There, yes. There, yes. So the phases, right, might be something along the lines of, let's say, zero degrees phase change, 180 degrees phase change, 180 degrees phase change, zero. Uh, so zero degrees uh, phase offset, 180, 180, zero, right? So uh, this is all nice, but very difficult to visualize, right? So Lo and behold, da, 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 we looked at something called constellation signal. Uh, let me add a word before that. Signal constellations. Right? And how do we do it? Da, 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 da. It's IQ representations. Right? And what we do is we have in the IQ plane, we have the I component, that's like the x-axis, and we have the Q component. And you might say, well, professor, where the heck did I get this from? Well, let me show you where you get it from. Okay, so what you do is you do something like this. So suppose you have um, S of T is equal to real, okay? And G of M of T, e to the j, 2 pi, f, c of t, right? All righty. Now, here, we have an amplitude, okay? Okay, so, okay, so far so good. And then at the same time, right, uh, with that message signal, we might also have a phase change, or we may not, right? So we're gonna have, Right? So this is, this is if amplitude 
info contains m of t. And this time varying function is if phase info contains m of t, right? All right, so if we express this, okay, so let's get rid of the m of t for now. So, I, I mean, sorry, the t factor here. Blah, 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 blah. Go back to brown. So that's real a e to the j theta j 2 pi f c of t. Okay, combine the e's. Okay, okie dokie, right? Now, um, Euler. Or Euler. <laughs> Every time I think of Euler, I think of the Edmonton Eulers. I don't know why. So now Euler says, doo -doo 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 -doo. all right, theta, J sine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we know this is complex. Out you go. Well, it's not goes to zero, but it's not considered. It's not passed through the real operator. So we get a cosine two pi fc t plus theta. All right, so far so good, so far so good. Uh, but, but of course there are some issues with this representation, right? Because we're again making this assumption that the letter a here, okay, is real, right? So, so what happens is of course, what we want is, uh, in this case, uh, if we use trig identity, what do we get? So what we get here is, what is it? Cos A plus B. So it's going to be A mm, cos A plus B. Cos A cos B. Right? Uh, blue plus. Yeah, see, this is where I need to always have trig identities on him. Trig identity. Ah, oh, see, dee, 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 dee. Oh, that looks like a good table. Uh, shucks. There we go. And then sine um, mu minus minus sine A. And is it half? No. Luckily enough, no. All right. So this is important, okay? Because now, now, very important. So uh, part of the reason why I'm writing this, remember, what's IQ? IQ representation, right? So G of M of T is equal to X of T plus J Y of T. So we have this, we have this. This is our in-phase component. That's our quadrature component. And again, reason why I wrote this out, this forms a basis function for the IQ domain. This also, oh, basis, basis function, right? IQ domain. This is basically the I basis function. That is the Q basis function. And then what do we have in terms of representation? What we have in terms of representation is we have the amplitude and we have the cosine of the phase. Here we have the amplitude and the sine of the phase. So now going back to our signal constellation, how does this translate? Well, this means, okay, is we have A, okay? So some distance from the origin, okay, of your IQ plane, correct? 
Okay. And what ends up happening is this is also rotated by theta. So at the end of the day, that signal point here, okay, it's going to be a cos theta. Mew, 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 mew. And, and the other one's going to be minus. Okay. So that signal constellation point. Okay, this is a signal constellation point. Okay, so very, very super duper important. Actually, I don't think it's minus. I take that back, folks. You, because what happens is it's IQ. Uh, what happens is you multiply it out in the pass band. What you end up getting at the end of the day is that expression here. So what we did is we just derived. Okay, so so what happens is if you do that, now you have. We should get identically if you work this out. And again, Euler's relation of that e to the j two pi f c of t. You get this. You, yeah, that's it. So, cool beans. So, so this is the coordinate system we are plotting here, right? So this here is x of t. This is y of t. So if we fast forward and we go to ASK, what's another way of representing ASK? Well, first of all, this fella here is zero. So really what X of T is, X of T contains the amplitude information. Okay, that's mapped from M of T. Right. So if you look at the signal constellation, oy, let me try that again. My artistic abilities today, not so good. Right. So our, what we got, if we get, let's say, as an example, for ASK, we have something that looks like this. We might have something that looks like, let's say that's A. That's 3a. Here I'm going to be a little bit nuts. I'm going to actually intentionally put minus a minus 3a. Now we have to be careful because of the phase change, right? Uh, there, like uh, when when we are when we are doing uh, the transmission, because here, if you notice, nope. Here I intentionally chose these amplitude values, right? Because if I were to do what I'm doing now, like stop here and just evenly distribute minus 3a, minus a, a, and 3a, I'm going to have a phase change, right? So uh, when I get, um, let's say 5a, where the heck is 5a? 5a is this, this guy here. Um, what it will look like is it's going to be in, in this mapping regime, it at this border, at that border, you're actually going to have a phase rotation of 180 degrees, but that will denote that, oh, this is a negative, negative amplitude. Mm. So it's kind of phase modulation, but really the information's in the amplitude, but we have to be careful, very mindful of how the envelope, okay? The envelope looks the same, but the phase is different, which means that we have a negative amplitude. Ugh, complicated. So going back to this guy, what you'll have is these are going to be your signal constellation points, right? And the signal constellations are going to be x of t and zero because y of t, right? This is a one-dimensional, one-dimensional modulation scheme. Okay, cool. Hold that thought, right? So each one of these 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 fellas, okay? So x of t can assume amplitude values right, of either minus 3a, minus a, plus a, plus 3a. And this will be dependent on what the binary pattern is equal to, what the, me what the message is. Is this a 1-1? Um, a one, one? Is it a 1-0? Is it a 0-0? Zero, zero? Is it a 0-1, right? Unique pattern. OK. And then, of course, what happens is if you pass it through a noisy channel at receiver, at the Rx, not a, not a prescription, it's not a prescription, okay? ASK, let's say in this case for ASK example,
what we got for every, so this is a symbol, right? So this is 3a, this is a, this is minus a, this is minus 3a. And remember, what is the mapping mapping of these, these suckers? Uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, okay. Uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, right? So this fella here, let's say is symbol 0, symbol 1, symbol 2, symbol 3, okay? Now, at the receiver, what happens is noise corrupts the amplitude in both I and Q, right? That's Q, that's the I. So what's going to look like is it's going to be a cloud of points. And the worst the noise, and the reason for that is we're passing the transmitted signal S sub T, okay, through the channel. And we get R of T, that's what the receiver deals with. And the channel might be as simple as adding noise. So this unwanted signal corrupts the amplitude value, correct? Hmm, yeah, yep, yep, yep. And in particular, there's something called additive white Gaussian noise. It's basically a Gaussian random variable, the bell curve, right? And it's adding unwanted stuff to S of T. So what ends up happening is we get at the receiver, not these perfect crisp little points, but we get a cloud. And so what ends up happening is folks usually decide based on who the closest ideal points are and you map towards them. So the decision boundaries, so it's usually the halfway point, the decision boundary, the decision boundary are here. Okay, so that's the decision boundaries. So any point, received point that happens on this side of the decision boundary gets mapped to the ideal point. And then over here gets mapped, over here gets mapped, over here gets mapped, all right? All right, uh, there's actually a theoretical reason behind the decision boundaries being halfway. So, so if let's say, this was minus 3a and that's minus 2a, the decision boundary will be at minus 2a and at zero and at plus 2a, right? Now, the thing is sometimes the noise is so bad, it actually ends up on the other side of the decision boundary and that's when errors occur, right? It gets mapped to the wrong signal constellation point. We'll talk more about that a little bit in this course, but a lot more in 4305. Now, this is very important, okay? because now I'm gonna do phase modulation. And phase modulation, remember phase modulation, how does it get mapped? It gets mapped onto a circle, right? The circle is defined by the constant amplitude and the information is decided by the phase. And the phase, right? Like let's say we have four PSK. That's what four PSK would look like. Uh, how about 16 PSK? So let's look at, um, let's look at 16 PSK. Let's look at an insane 16 phase shift key as an example. What would that be? Uh, 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 uh. This is what 16 PSK would look like. Amplitude information contains no, uh, amplitude contains no information about what each symbol is. Okay, 16 symbols. And again, just like with ASK goes through that additive white Gaussian noise channel. Now here's the problem. The closer those signal constellation points are, and that happens the more phase values we use to represent larger binary patterns, right? Because recall the expression. So more unique representations 
right? And this is due to larger binary patterns. Uh, but this also translates into more phase values. But that's bad because now they're all squinched up on that single circle. And so what are the decision boundaries here? How do I know one phase has been communicated versus another halfway point on the circle, right? And the more we cram onto that same circle, the more closer together these signal transmitted signal constellation points come together. And as a result, all I need is a tiny bit of noise and it gets bumped over to mapping incorrectly to another signal constellation point. And how many bits are in 16 PSK? Four bits, right? So this could be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and so on and so forth, right? Bup, 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 bup. So this is a problem. So the bigger this is, the more squinched up everything is on that same circle of radius A, and we increase the probability of mapping to an incorrect signal constellation point, right? Same thing here. If let's say we go from four ASK to 16 ASK, problems arise because now we're squinching up on the same, the same um, uh, X axis, the, the in, in phase dimension, more and more signal constellation points. And you might say, well, so what professor? Well, if I do minus, like, you know, if I do 16 ASK, um, how about I just go in completely insane and just do this, right? So let's say I do that. Let's say that's a zero mark and I do this. Let's say that's A, 3A, 5A, 7A, 9A, 11A. So how many points? One, two, three, four, five, six. 13A, 15A, so that's eight points. Do, do, do. And then do the exact same, but, but negative on this aside. Okay, now you might say, yeah, just do that. Keep a nice separation of 2A between every one of the signal constellation points and we're all golden. Yeah, but that's true, but here's the issue. Dynamic range, right, um, of your TX. Because what happens is, imagine now, before with just four ASK, I just had to deal with a dynamic range of what? 6A. Now, assuming that the separation is still 2A apart, and remember that this sucker here is minus 15A. This is kind of a big problem because now I have a dynamic range 30A, you know, I'm going to speak uh, German, verboten. This is horrible, right? The dynamic range, imagine your poor power amplifier has got to compensate for this. So you either have to get a really, really expensive power amplifier and other RF components, um, or, or I shrink the dynamic range. And you might say, why? So let's say that's your power amplifier at the TX, right? What's its transfer function? FCN is function, right? So uh, ideally, we want to stay in the linear range, right? Linear range. But what happens is at some amplitude value, it's going to saturate. 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 That's bad. That's super bad news. Saturation. So because what happens is anything that goes above that, any sort of like, uh, any sort of voltage, any sort of signal that occurs above that gets clipped. And that, that's a huge pile of beans to deal with, right? So, okay, so the problems, okay? Um, so first of all, we have dynamic range, uh, dynamic range considerations. So this is especially true for things like ASK. And then the other thing is um, spacing. 
between symbols to avoid error. Okay, and that's in particular true of the PSK modulations. Okay, if you keep the amplitude the same. So the solution, okay, and we saw this is why not distribute, okay, distribute your symbols nicely across IQ. Yeah, yeah, no, seriously, seriously. Why not I do this? So let's say I keep a nice boundary. Let's say I don't want to exceed my dynamic range like that and like that. Here's my origin. That's I and Q. All right. So why not I do something like this? It's like, okay, uh, let's also me, 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 me. Let's put a bounding box there. We don't want Q to exceed it either. And we don't want to squinch everything up like insane, right? Um, across, like, you know, we want, we want, we want minimum 2A separation, okay? Because then our receiver has a very good chance of not messing up in terms of decoding. Like we calculate a probability, ay, ay, ay. Um, sorry. Okay, here we go. Now, so what do we do? What we do is the following. Let's say we put a symbol here, 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 and here, okay. That's great. That's the maximum. We don't want to, we do not want to tempt fate and mess around with our radio frequency front end. So let's say that's symbol zero, symbol one, symbol two, symbol three. Okie dokie. Now 2A apart, cool beans. How about symbol four, symbol five, symbol six, symbol seven, Eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So here, well, let me use a different color. Let me use blue. Me, 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 me. There we go. That's two A, and it's still respecting that bound. Two A, two A, two A. You get my picture, right? Even these. 2A, 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 today, okay? Now, let's go a little bit more insane. Why not in here? Totally unused real estate. Fantastic. And what are the distances? 2A, 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 2A. This is beautiful, folks. I've just compacted 16 symbols, which means it has four bit representations per symbol in a way that respects the, uh, you know, the, the constraints on the dynamic range, okay? And it has enough margin between the different symbol signal constellations that when I decode it, I'm not gonna have too much crazy error. I've just created QAM, quadrature amplitude modulation, right here. So the way I did it, okay, the way I did it is the following. The generic expression for quadrature amplitude modulation, the G of M of T is A of T Cos. Mm -hmm. Plus uh, mu mu mu. Yes. B of T sine. And that's a J. So that's what I've done. That's my X term. 
That's my y term. So that's what I've done. So what happens is in this representation, I, Q, I can map anything, different amplitude. Okay. So this fella here is represented like that. So the way the trick I would do is let's say if I have B equals four bits, which means that I have M equals two to the B equals 16 possible waveform representations. The way that the, what I would do, okay, is for instance, I would have two to the B over two. I would put, if I had four bits, I would put two bits representing this amplitude value. And I would have two bits representing that amplitude value. Right? So, so what I could do is something along those lines. Um, so, so I, I mean, that's one, one way of, of representing this, this, this waveform, right? Is, um, hmm, let me, let me think, 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 think. Hmm. See, that's, that's like, no, 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 no. Hold the phone, as they say. I have to do that for a different representation. Uh, see, the IQ representation. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Because if like this fella here, remember, we would have to have a function that looks like that, right? So this is the magnitude and phase representation. That's different, that's different. But here, this is a little bit more, um, how can I put it, intuitive if you wanna make the grid pattern, right? So what we call that, this fella here, everything's uniformly spaced. We call this specifically, we call this square QAM, right? In this case, it's square 16 QAM. 16 refers to the M factor, right? And then what happens is each one of these signal constellation points could be 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and so on and so forth, okay? So this is actually quite beautiful stuff, right? So this is how, right, one way of representing. And then of course, if I do G of M of T, R of T. So I choose a different uh, magnitude and a different phase. And again, each one of these can be represented by a subset, subset of bits and the total number of bits, it's got to be equal to B. So I could like have multiple phase representations, but let's say two, two possible uh, radius, right? Magnitude representations. I could do crazy stuff like this. So I just showed this, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I have one possible magnitude representation and a phase value. And then here's another magnitude representation from the origin and another, well, that's actually the same. These two are the same distance. In fact, that, 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 and that, they all are the same. Cool, right, right? This, they're all the same distance. And then last but not least, these fellas here, okay? So we have three separate possible magnitude representations, right, from the origin. And then they each have a different set of phases as well that can be represented here. All right, I can, I can dig it. Now, that's one, right? So that's the square representation. I can also make it a rectangle, but square. But uh, I can also go really crazy and do this. I could do, uh, let's say one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. And this has radius one. There's eight phases. And then I can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another eight signal constellation points, different radius R2, right? And also different phase values as well in the IQ plane. This is also totally 100% kosher and it's 100% QAM. So the, the message here is QAM information, bit information is contained in the radius, okay? Um, as well as in the phase. Very, very, very important. So it's a combination of both worlds. It's a combination of ASK in terms of using the amplitude information and it is PSK, there's phase information that's contained with it. So it's really, really powerful stuff, seriously. So it's great. And, um, and, and so that's, that's why a lot of different communication systems, digital communication systems use QAM a lot. In fact, what you'll find in practice what you'll find in practice is um, you're going to have BPSK, but BPSK is essentially like uh, BASK. So, all right. Then you're going to have QPSK, all right. Um, then what you'll have is uh, 16 uh, PSK, right? Uh, but then what happens is you're going to have things like, let's say, six. So usually the limit in terms of PSK is like 16. That's like the absolute maximum before you have like an atrocious amount of errors. Then 256 QAM. And then even higher, depending on how robust your communication system is. So here, there's a method behind the madness here, right? So BPSK tends to be very robust. It's either one or zero that got transmitted, right? Robust, not high throughput or data rate, right? And then it progressively gets better and better until you get here, which is not robust, it's brittle. You have tons of symbols that can be represented here, right? So not robust, but if the conditions are awesome, you can have very high throughput, amazing. Okay, so, so that's the thing. A lot of communication centers, including Wi-Fi, uh, have this kind of range. It could select, it could say, oh, the environment's pretty good. So I'm automatically going to switch to blah. So the deciding factor, choose which one to choose, is based on something called the signal to noise ratio, All right? So signal, to noise ratio. And so it's basically um, uh, like if you take the, the noise power, so 10 log 10. So SNR is usually represented in dB and it's the transmit power divided by the noise power, right? So noise power is kind of uh, interesting. So this you would extract, okay? Uh, so transmit power, it's like uh, you know you 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 like you 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 should know what that is, and you t uh, and then the noise power usually is this is statistics of the Gaussian the AWGN channel, in which case it's actually equal to the the standard deviation, and so you can actually calculate this pretty readily. And so what ends up happening at the end of the day is you get this this beautiful ratio. And again, in forty three oh five, this is outside the scope scope of this course. What happens is in just a pure AWGN channel, forget about fading, forget about any sort of other distortion. What you have is something called the bit error rate curves, right? And what you do is, let's say this is um, mu 10 to the zero, 10 to the minus one, 10 to the minus two, 10 to the minus three, 10 to the minus four, and it keeps on going down, down, down. So what ends up happening, and then, and so these are orders of magnitude, right? So what's 10 to the zero? One, okay? This is 
0 0.1. This is 0 0.01. This is 0 0.001. That is 0 0.0001, and so on. We go by orders of magnitude. Magnitude, all right? And here, this is signal to noise ratio in dB, decibels, right? And this is a power value. What you'll get is, let's say that zero dB signal noise ratio, one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. And what you'll get is something that looks like this. So what you'll get is these like, what we call waterfall curves. Beautiful. And so this waterfall curve might correspond to BPSK. On the other hand, um, so you need very little signal noise ratio, right? You just need a little bit of transmit power over the noise power because how, what, what again is that relationship in regards to? This. It makes these clouds. And the more noise we have, the bigger the clouds. So what these clouds represent are the, the positions of the received symbols that have been, uh, have been distorted by the noise. So if it's everything ideal, the tr received signal should be exactly where the transmitted symbol is in the IQ plane. But noise, what it does is it displaces the IQ. It messes it up. It changes the value. And what happens is it increases the probability of error mapping to the wrong signal constellation point. Right? So these are my decision boundaries. And if I have one signal constellation point that goes here, it gets mapped incorrectly to that. Let me, uh, let me redraw that, this guy. Pew, pew. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> All right, so what ends up happening is it gets incorrectly mapped there. That's bad news because that's gonna create errors in the binary pattern that we just transmitted because it's going to be received and decoded as something else, right? So BPSK, remember, what, what's BPSK? How does BPSK look like? And after being received like that, that's quite a distance to get accidentally decoded into the other symbol, right? As opposed to here where, you know, it kind of gets a little bit more complicated. So that, so what, what these curves show, so this is for BPSK and let's say uh, 64 QAM is like over there, right? It's usually around like 16 dB and uh, uh, for SNR before it starts going down. So what happens is you're gonna need a lot more signal to noise ratio in order to very securely have the number of errors being one for every thousand bits being transmitted. Okay. All right. So I'm the, I need to digress because this is a lot of stuff that's like more in 4305 than it is for this class. So um, let's switch gears to the actual slides. Ha. So we saw this general expression. Okay. We saw that. This is what 4 QAM looks like, 16 QAM, 64 QAM. And this is where that noise thing I'm talking about. I'm really nervous about the noise stuff, right? Noise is bad because uh, right now, this is like pesky amount of noise. You can't even see it. Uh, now you can see it. So what happens is how does noise get modeled? Well, noise gets modeled like this. So noise looks like, so uh, like, you know, so uh, mew, 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 mew. So pass band noise. So let's say that's S of T.
And then noise, right? So the received signal will look like the transmitted signal. So this here, very important, you'll see this all the way in 43, ECE 4305. This is our signal model. Signal model. And so noise, transmitted signal, TX signal, received signal. Okay. Now the problem is the noise here has an in-phase component. And it has a quadrature component. So what does this effectively do? So let's take one signal constellation point. So what this will look like if your transmitted signal looked like this, right? So it had X of T and Y of T. Now you have NI and NQ added to it. So the received signal might look like that, where this, okay, and that, this fella here could be X of T plus, all right, uh, n i of t. And this fella here, okay, could be uh, y of t plus n q of t, that both of which are bad news, okay? All right, so that's why we get these like uh, scatter plots. Um, let's go back to here, okay. So there are a few ways of representing QAM. I showed a few, okay? And you can check these out. So rectangular, I think I showed. The circular one are like those two concentric PSK modulations, right? The eight and eight. Um, there's a variety of other combinations you can do. You can do four and 12. You can do three concentric rings. You can do anything you want, all right? Totally cool because you're manipulating both the amplitude and the phase and information is contained in both. Seven round one's really cool. Because what that means is you have a ring of seven and you know that dead space, you notice in PSK, the middle is never used. Why the heck not? Put a signal constellation point there, remove it from the concentric circle, the, the, the circle that's around it. And instead of putting eight, do, 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 put seven. Problem solved. So last but not least, did you notice something about the MQAM, the, uh, the square MQAM that's like quite fascinating? No? Okay, check this out. Check this out. This is so, so cool. And then I'm gonna call it a day. Check this out. So look at it, 16 points, four by four. What does this kind of look like? This looks like in the I domain, What is it? Minus 3a, minus a, a, 3a. How do I demodulate this? I extract out, you know, the MRE QAM symbol. I extract out the I component. And I apply an ASK demodulator to it. That's what it is. This is amplitude modulation along the x-axis, along the i-axis. Then, likewise, 3a, a, minus a, minus 3a. This is ASK modulation in the q-axis, right? So it's ASK, ASK. So what I could do is I take my QAM symbol, I demodulate it. How do I do that? Cosine, right? So coherent, that's sine. So we need to do a phase shifting of 90 degrees. Low pass filter, LPF. And then I do an ASK D mod, right? And an ASK D mod, what is it going to be at the end of the day? It's going to be four possible amplitude values. Well, 
theoretically, it's actually a range of amplitude values because of the noise. So you quantize it to minus 3a, minus a, a, and 3a. So this actually, this branch, lo and behold, very importantly, is actually a square root of m. So if this is m equals 16, this is going to be an, a 4 ASK D mod on the in phase component. And this is going to be a square root M ASK D mod on the I and the Q component. Beautiful. This is a very elegant, very easy demodulation technique. Don't have to worry about phase whatsoever. Extract out I, extract out Q, do the square root of M ASK D mod on it. Da 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 da. You got your symbol. All right, folks. So um, I'm going to save that for now. And I am going to, so I think we're going to call that a day. Uh, but uh, what did we learn from this uh, lesson? Well, we saw how important it is to be able to visualize modulation schemes using signal constellations. We effectively taken these uh, time series type waveform representations and we converted it completely into a vector, uh, a vector format. And then we saw the beautiful art of trying to design um, decoding strategies using okay, this vector representation. In this case, we do kind of a hard decoding. Uh, basically, are you this amplitude or that amplitude, this amplitude or that amplitude, right? And in particular, we saw how with respect to MRE QAM, we kind of take care of the issues that are, um, that are kind, of a, kind of a big problem with respect to ASK and PSK modulation. So with that, uh, that concludes uh, lecture 22 of ECE 3311.